Welcome to Seth Craft. I'm Seth. I am getting into 3D printing. As you can see behind me, I have some printers on this rack. I was told early on that I'm going to have to have a UPS or an uninterruptible power supply. Did I heed that advice? Of course not. Am I regretting it? Of course. So uh, what this is going to do is allow my printers to continue operating if the power goes out or if the power glitches or if uh, something else here in the shop turns that power off for just a moment. So what I'm having an issue with, I was trying to print something really tall. And if you look here, there are some lines where the, um, the 3D print skipped a beat and moved forward. And uh, sadly, when you're printing something this big, you know, that was probably hour six whenever it hit that. And the whole thing is ruined at that point. I think what's happening with this is that I just installed an oil heater. This oil filled heater has a thermostatically controlled outlet and whenever the temperature either gets hot enough to turn the unit off or cold enough to turn it back on, I believe that is causing a surge of power in my power strip for the 3D printers. And that causes the stepper motor to uh, flicker or to uh, miss a step. And that's what's causing my problem. I could be wrong, but I think that's what's going on. So I don't have a actual UPS just yet, but I was thinking, can you use a power station as a UPS? Now, a lot of the power stations you can buy do have that feature, but their sw uh, switch time is something like 15, 20 milliseconds, and that may not be enough to keep these printers going. So I'm going to be testing out two power stations today. One of them is an All Powers brand and one of them is a Zendure brand. Let me show you those real quick. This power station here is called the All Powers R1500, I believe, but it'll actually do 1,800 watts and its switch time is 15 milliseconds. So hopefully that's fast enough to keep the printers going. Next, I've got a monster of a power station. This is the Zendure Superbase 5, I believe. Um, it actually has a zero millisecond switch. So I think this one's gonna do fantastically. Um, but those are the two we're gonna be testing out today. Okay, so those are the power stations I'm gonna be using as a UPS. And here's the test that I want to run. The Bamboo Labs comes with a Benchy model. I want to start this model using the white PLA basic, and I'm gonna have the machine hooked up to the all powers power station, and it's gonna start the job, it's gonna run through, and then maybe somewhere about, I don't know, two or three minutes in, I'm going to yank the power out of the wall, and that will allow the power station to switch over to the um, off-grid mode, essentially. We will let it uh, run for a, a minute or so, and then I'm gonna plug it back up and see if that causes any issues as well. So that'll basically say, if the power were to go out for a minute and then come back on, would it keep printing my model? Now, this one was done on the same bamboo that I'm gonna use here, and it's kind of my test. So this was just straight grid power. All right, and then um, I will repeat the same thing with the giant Zendure power station. I really hope that one works because if it does, I think it's got a 5,000 watt output. I could run a whole rack of these printers on that one machine and be good to go. So I guess the key thing to think about with these power stations is you've got to be able to have your output power on the machines to be uh, less than its um, pass-through power, if that makes sense. So let's say this power station can charge at um, 1,000 watts. Well, if you've got uh, 1,500 watts of machines, it won't be able to keep up and it will start dropping the battery down. Now, after all of that, the last thing I wanna do is start this tall piece again and see if it has that issue after I use the uh, power station as a UPS. So I'll have to give you those results um, after we finish all of these. This is the power strip that I use for my printers. I'm gonna go ahead and plug that up and uh, that should allow us to get that output there. I'm gonna turn on the AC power. You can see up there on the top, it says UPS. 
So we are good to go on the pass-through power. This A1 is being powered through that power station. I'm gonna go ahead and click on the files here and scroll down until I find the Benchy. All right, here we go. It says it's a 20 minute print, uses 12 grams. I'm gonna load up the white PLA. All right, and we've started. The Speed Benchy is on the way. I believe it's time for us to pull the plug. All right, so what I'm gonna do is uh, pull out the wall plug over here going to the power station, but I want you to keep an eye up here on the Benchy and see what happens. So we're looking for nothing at all besides just the machine working. So are you ready? All right, here we go. All right, I pulled the plug. I feel like it uh, did not matter at all that this changed. But I'll let that run for a few minutes to see if there was a skip step in there. Um, but as you can see down here, um, I pulled this power cord out of the wall to the power station. And so now we are running completely but two, uh, 177, 150, 70. So yeah, that's running completely on the power station now. Now this particular power station can run this one printer for five, well, four to five hours at that rate. So if the power were to go out for a short time, it could uh, run this one job for that amount of time. Okay, now I'm gonna plug the power station back up and see if it has any issues. Did you see anything? I feel like it's good. Once again, it shows UPS and has about the same amount of watts coming out. All right, we'll let this finish up and we'll do a comparison. So far, I'm pleased with the way this all powers power station did with the uh, UPS. So let me break this Benchy off of here. So let's compare this one to the one that was done um, on the, um, the grid power. So this one over here was done with regular grid power and you can kind of see the details that it has. And this one was just done with the, um, the plug being pulled on that power station. So both of them have the same little line about the time that I pulled the power. So that's not uh, an issue there. But I don't see any reason to uh, believe that that power station didn't perform perfectly on that. So. The Zendir power station is a monster. Let's go ahead and plug this up real quick. The battery is so big in here, it says it's gonna run for 2.6 days as is. Just like before, I'm going to print out this same Benchy. I'll let it get to about the same layer and then I will pull the plug again. The Zendir power station is jumping around between 60 and 300 watts here on the display but it does have the UPS up here on the top. I think what I've heard is that this unit is supposed to have a zero millisecond output or switch. And so uh, we'll test it out here in, well, to be honest, we're probably ready now. So let me go ahead and give that a try. So once again, I'm gonna pull the power from the wall. Are you ready? Here we go. Well, it seems like it is working just fine here. I didn't see any uh, slowdowns or stops. I did hear the uh, Zinger power station make a click real quick, um, but it can run this for about one and a half days on that current power. Well, pulling the power seemed to uh, have no effect, so let me go ahead and plug this back up real quick and uh, see if it maintains its operation like that. There we go. We're back on UPS mode. Once again, it's comparison time. This one is the grid power with no power station. And this one is with the Zendir power station. So I am once again not seeing anything varying from one to the other that would indicate uh, dirty power or poor power problems with that um, uh, plug being pulled. So. Yep, very good. I think the Zendir also works well as a UPS. That Zendir power station is a little bit loud and I've left it plugged in so you can hear it. 
So what have we learned? The uh, Zendure power station did fine. The uh, All Powers power station did fine. And of course the grid, they were all the same. I don't see any difference between these at all. So my next task to do is overnight, I'm going to reprint uh, this tall piece and see if we can eliminate those uh, missteps there. And uh, I will show you the result of that in the morning. So let me get that set up and uh, hopefully the Zendir will take care of whatever that is. So it's the next day. Let's see how the print has fared overnight. So uh, looking at it here, yeah, it seems to be perfect. It's got the brim down here, which is uh, came off just fine. So doing a comparison of uh, the two. So here's what it's supposed to look like. So very smooth. There is a seam over here, which is where I've got it uh, programmed to do. The inside looks great. And now comparing it to what it looked like before, where it's got uh, these missed steps all the way around and also uh, on the inside it's pretty garbage in there too so awesome i think that my um maybe dirty power or that honestly i think it was this heater turning on and off that was causing uh, these problems so very cool look at that so we now know that it's possible to use a power station to run 3d printers as a ups i was able to yank the power cord out and plug it back up and there were no issues with the uh, Benchy test that we ran. And then also this eight and a half hour print had uh, no defects or missed steps or missed layers like it did with the uh, regular no power station. So I think it is 100% necessary to have a UPS, um, but a power station, if you've already got one, is a great way to um, supply power to these printers. However, if you don't have a power station, I highly recommend that you get a UPS, one that is dedicated for um, running uh, computers or printers like this. Because power stations are way more expensive, there's more features to them than you would need, and uh, yeah, just go with a UPS if you don't have one already. I will likely be purchasing a UPS in the near future, and I will give you a review on how well it does as well. So. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Seth with the Seth Craft Shop and I will see you in the next video. Bye.